Hey teacher, Liesl Weber here. Today we're talking about when to say yes and when to say no. Putting it another way, we're talking about how to clear away the non-essential things in your life to make room for the essential. And I couldn't be talking about essentialism without my buddy, Greg McEwen. Seriously though, this book is called Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less, and it is an amazing read. I highly recommend it. It's actually where we're getting today's framework on how to know what to say yes to and what to say no to. The hardest thing about our education system is that there is so much need. Whether you're in a public school, a private school, a homeschool co-op, a charter school, whatever it is, there's normally a ton of opportunities for you to come and serve. The problem with all of these opportunities is that not all of them are essential to you. Let me explain what I mean by that. You have a unique contribution to make to your school, whether you always feel like that or not. You do. There is a space that you fill beautifully. Maybe you're still growing in that space. Maybe you'd like to move and develop that space further. But there is a unique contribution that you have to offer. The idea behind essentialism is the idea of less but better. Basically, learning how to specialize in that contribution. Instead of spreading yourself thin amongst multiple different tasks, learning how to say no and stop diluting your yes. I'm committing to less things, but the things I am committing to are gonna be phenomenal. So let's get into the process. The first step is to explore. Explore the opportunities that are in front of you and ask yourself this very important question. What are the trade-offs if I say yes to this? With every opportunity, there is a trade-off. You are trading your time or your energy or your focus or something else for this new opportunity. Ask yourself, is this new opportunity worth the trade-off that I'm about to engage with? Number two, eliminate, which means saying no. That might mean that you need to pull up the list of all the responsibilities you are currently carrying and look at the ones that are not essential to your unique contribution. It may mean that you prepare yourself to say no for upcoming opportunities. You may anticipate an opportunity presenting itself and be ready to say no because you've already explored the trade-offs that are gonna come with saying yes to that. Step three is to execute. This step is all about protecting your yes. It's about building systems in place that will filter out the non-essential opportunities and protect your yes to the essential opportunities. Here's an example from my life. My school would offer a stipend position to coach a team or to run cafeteria duty all year. Now, one of my unique contributions is having incredible class culture. That means that I would spike our classroom activities with something wacky and crazy as often as possible. Everything from having wacky class traditions to bringing in guest speakers. This took a lot of planning and creativity and focus behind the scenes for me to really pull off these events. I knew there was a huge trade-off for me helping coach a team or taking a cafeteria position. It meant that I would lose my hours and also lose some of my focus. So even though the opportunity presented some much needed cash, I said no to the non-essential in order for me to carry out the essential. Ask yourself this, is this something that anyone can do? Or is this something that only I can do? Every time an opportunity would present itself, I would take it to the Lord and ask him, is this an essential thing or is this a non-essential thing? Are we gonna give a hard yes to this or are we gonna give a gracious no? Every time I felt the Lord say, this is not essential, I want you to say no, I would always trust him for provision in some other way. And of course, he always provided. This is how we partner with the Father, even in the practical day-to-day decision-making skills. When I first read this book, it radically upgraded my thinking. It helped me learn how to prioritize. Now I have a framework for knowing when to give my yes and when to give a gracious no. This has made me way more clear and way more effective as an educator. And let me challenge you, if you've never thought about what your unique contribution at your school is, spend some time and figure that out. Because when you start to value your contribution, you start to protect it with everything you've got. I hope this 
summary was helpful, guys. Again, go read the book, Essentialism by Greg McEwen. It is packed full of incredible stories and other frameworks that we don't have time to get into today. Bless you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.